very warm welcome to you all on this Friday of Easter week 6. I hope that you're all keeping well and that things are as good as they can be. Now we're out in the garden again today. I hope it's not too windy. Um, but we'll give it a go and see how we go. Queen of Heaven, rejoice this day. Alleluia. Alleluia. As he promised has arisen. Alleluia. Pour for us to God your prayer. Alleluia. Rejoice and be glad, O Virgin Mary. Alleluia. For the Lord has risen indeed. Alleluia. Let us pray. O God, who by the resurrection of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, you have brought joy to the whole world, grant that aided by the prayers of his mother, the Virgin Mary, we may know the joys of eternal life through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. O God, make speed to save us. O Lord, make haste to help us. And to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Alleluia. We bless you, Father, Lord of life, to whom all living beings tend, the source of holiness and grace, our first beginning and our end. We give you thanks, redeeming Christ, who bore the weight of sin and shame. In dark defeat you conquered sin, and death by dying overcame. Come, Holy Spirit, search in the fire, whose flame all evil burns away. With light and love come down to us, in silence and in peace this day. We praise you, God, the three in one, sublime in majesty and might. You reign forever, Lord of all, in splendour and an ending light. Psalms of Ascent, Psalm 129 and 130. Many a time they have fought against me from my youth, May Israel now say, Many a time they have fought against me from my youth, but they have not prevailed against me. The plowers ploughed upon my back and made their furrows long, but the righteous Lord has cut the cords of the wicked in pieces. Let them be put to shame and turn backwards, as many are the enemies of Zion. Let them be like grass upon the housetops, which withers before it can grow, so that no weep reaper can fill his hand and nor a binder of sheaves his bosom. And none who go by may say, The blessing of the Lord be upon you. We bless you in the name of the Lord. Out of the depths I have cried to you, O Lord. Lord, hear my voice. Let your ears consider well the voice of my supplication. If you, Lord, were to mark what is done amiss, O Lord, who could stand? But there is forgiveness within you, so you shall be feared. I wait for the Lord. My soul waits for him, in his hope is my word. My soul waits for the Lord, more than the night watch for the morning, more than the night watch for the morning. O Israel, wait for the Lord, for with the Lord there is mercy, with him is redemption, and he shall redeem Israel from all their sins. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. And we'll continue with the reading of the Gospel reading for the set for the Eucharist for today. A continuation of the reading of the Gospel of St. John. Jesus said to his disciples, Very I truly I tell you, you will weep and mourn, but the world will rejoice. You will have pain, but your pain will turn into joy. Where a woman is in labour, she has pain because her hour has come. But when a child is born, she no longer remembers the anguish, because the joy of, brought, of having brought a human being into the world. So you have pain now, but you, I will see you again, and your heart will rejoice, and no one will take your joy from it. On that day you will ask nothing of me. Very truly I tell you, if you ask anything of the Father in my name, I will give it to you. Our second reading from Celebrating the Seasons. This is from a treatise 
on the Lord's Prayer by Cyprian of Carthage. We should live as temples of God, that it may be plain to all that God dwells in us. It is important that our conduct should not degenerate, and we become unworthy of the Spirit. Rather, let us who have set out to be heavenly and spiritual, entertain only heavenly and spiritual thoughts and behaviour. For only the God himself has declared, I will glorify those who glorify me, but those that despise me I shall despise. The blessed Apostle Paul has also stated in one of his letters, You are not on your own, you were bought at a price, therefore glorify God in your body. In the Lord's Prayer we go on to say, Hallowed be your name. We are not envisages that God will be made holy by our prayers, rather we are asking that his holiness should shine in us. Anyway, by whom could God be sanctified, since it is God himself who sanctifies? But observe that in the scripture it is also written, Be holy because I am holy. Thus it should be our earnest desire that we who have been made holy in baptism should continue and grow in what we have begun to be. For this we pray every day. We certainly need to be made holy daily, because every day we sin, and every day we have those sins washed away. In this way we are engaged in a process that makes us deeply more sanctified. If we reflect upon those readings for a moment, they tell us about some of the challenges that we face in life, particularly challenges that we face um, in the way in which we behave. Now, behaviour is largely a choice. We choose, if we are mature, to respond well to situations and challenges. If we are slightly insecure, we might lash out or get rather annoyed or be rather perturbed. We might feel a sense of anxiety and anguish because we are dealing with situations we cannot manage. Nevertheless, God gives us assurance that the human condition is something that is constant and that everybody faces challenges. We see that in our scripture reading from John's Gospel today where he talks using the analogy of childbirth that of course childbirth is a challenging thing but when you have the joy of the child you forget about the childbirth because you're given something better. We face challenges today because we have to keep ourselves safe and many of the things that we might enjoy doing have been removed from us. But nevertheless we can have two responses to that. We can get rather embittered and anxious and jump up and down and feel sorry for ourselves. We might get rather upset or overawed by it. Or we can see what we can learn from it. And what we can learn from it is a sense of resilience. We can place our dependence upon God and use this time wisely. We can get in touch with our friends and family using new communication methods like Zoom or things like that or the more traditional telephone. We can show how important people are to us by the way in which we behave and think of them. This morning I buried a 98 year old and that was a, a very strange thing to do in these uh, socially distanced times and it was just a graveyard only funeral that was really the second graveyard only funeral I've done in 15 years and there weren't very many people there because of the rules. But the information I'd been sent about our departed brother's life spoke of a very long life, well lived. Not perhaps the most exciting of lives, but a life that was well lived in the love of a family and joyful memories that were left. A life that was lived and a life as well that involved service of others, helping people along the way. And that is all that we can do really. We can be a source of joy and an encouragement to others because we are children of God. So the call on all of us at this time, before we find out next what Thursday when the lockdown measures are considered again, how our lives might change. The call on all of us is to be a source of blessing and a source of joy rather than a source of discouragement or of anxiety or a person who perturbs others and is a troublemaker. These are choices that we make, each and every one of us, each and every day. We're currently in the space between Ascension Day and Pentecost 
when the disciples lost Jesus a second time and the coming of the gift of the Holy Spirit that we celebrate on Pentecost. A liminal time, a time of waiting. Very apt for us at this time because we are all waiting for life to return to some semblance of normality. Let's hope we'll use this time wisely so that when we get back the freedoms that we've always enjoyed, even if it's something as simple as pursuing a hobby that we might love or going out for a coffee with our friends or actually seeing our friends in person rather than on the other end of a Zoom camera or on FaceTime or on the telephone, that we'll actually appreciate the great gift that that is. Many people face great challenges at this time, especially those whose families have been very unwell. And we know the wisdom of keeping ourselves safe, for none of us wants to end up on a ventilator and have to be taught to walk again. And if you see some of the stories about rehab on the news, they are truly terrifying. Or we can be like the idiots who gather on the beach, not socially distanced, taking risks because they don't care. If that only affects them, that's fair enough. But of course the problem is it affects all of us. So we're called to be reflective and wise. Let's pray this day. We'll use wisdom and strength that we'll get outside and enjoy the beauty of the world but enjoy it safely because by doing that we are doing the work of God God bless you this day and always so let us turn to God in prayer and together make our prayers of intercession and so as we pray this day we pray that we will continue this day in the presence of God for strength and for courage as we've celebrated the Feast of the Ascension O oh God as you've withdrawn from our sight that you may, you may be known by our love help us to enter the cloud where you are hidden and surrender all our certainty to the darkness of faith grant this through Jesus Christ our Lord Amen we pray for all who work on the front line. We pray for our families and friends, for those for whom we are separated. We pray for all who are facing challenges and economic uncertainty at this time, for all whose employment is in jeopardy. Risen Christ, ascended Christ, faithful shepherd of your father's sheep, Teach us to hear your voice and to follow your command that your people may be gathered into one flock to the glory of God the Father. Amen. We pray for ourselves, for our Christian communities, for our families and friends. Risen Christ, you have raised our human nature to the throne of heaven. Help us to seek and serve you that we may join you at the Father's side where you reign with the Spirit in glory, now and forevermore. Amen. So with confidence we join together in the prayers our Saviour gave us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. So as we gather at this lunchtime, we give thanks for our salvation, one in Christ. Pray God's blessing upon one another. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. That formally marks the end of midday prayer. Can I take this opportunity on this rather blustery but quite bright Friday to wish you well? Uh, midday prayer will continue from Wednesday to Friday next week. On uh, Monday is the National Pilgrimage Shrine of Our Lady of Walsingham. I mentioned it several times this week. Um, you can go onto their website and it will give you a link. Uh, and they will be live streaming the Pilgrim Mass at 12 o'clock from inside the shrine. And Father Tim Pike from London will be the preacher who will be, uh, I think, being beamed in from his church or his vicarage in London. 
Um, I know for those of us who go reasonably regularly, it's a bit of a loss this year that we aren't heading off towards Norfolk. Um, but nevertheless, it's more important uh, to keep ourselves safe and keep ourselves well. Mass will be uploaded on Sunday, hopefully by 11 o'clock, all being well, um, technology uh, notwithstanding. So can I take this opportunity uh, to wish you well and hope that you're able to keep yourself safe and that your spirits remain as good as they can possibly be. We've been blessed over the last couple of days with some uh, rather lovely weather and I'm told it's not to continue. Um, but one of the, the interesting joys of when you switch a camera on, particularly in this garden, is it manages the light makes it to look, uh, make it look much more tropical than it actually is. Um, so it looks like I'm somewhere um, in, the, in the Bahamas or something, or possibly in the exotic garden in Overbecks in Solcombe. I can assure you I'm not. I'm definitely in the vicarage at Margam. So I wish you well. Say may God bless you. Uh, Mass will be uploaded by 11 o'clock Wednesday. Uh, 11 o'clock Sunday rather and midday prayer continues next week from Wednesday to Friday and don't forget on Monday which is a bank holiday rather than going out like the silly people to the beaches and infecting one another stay home and watch the national pilgrimage from Walsingham which will do you much more good may God bless you this day and always Amen <laughs>